a simple one. Just give me your assessment of the progress of the offensive line. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, about this group. I think we got the highest ceiling we've had since I've been here. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, you know, we're a little bit um, up and down. Sometimes we really, really look good, and sometimes we, we, we don't look as good. So uh, we had some uh, protection issues out there today that we got to clean up. But I'm really excited just about the group, the effort we're playing with, the physicality we're playing with. Our communication's gotten way better. Uh, Zach Frazier is doing a great job at center. Uh, we've really worked hard to develop a uh, second team sitter with a committer. Um, is doing a really good job where he can come in and take snaps at that second team center also, along with being the guard. Uh, but feel good about the, uh, the tackle spots. Yates is taking a step, you know, still a pretty young player. Uh, he's taking a step this camp and, and had, a, had a, a solid camp so far. And we've got a battle at right tackle, you know, with White, Milam, and Parker Moore. It's, it's a battle. White's really come in and done a really good job with uh, being ready to play and um, – and knowing the offense and just playing with outstanding effort. And, uh, and Parker has, has made himself way better over the past year. Um, and, and that competition will do it. I mean, that's what it's all about, guys, here. We, you know, this is the first year I've really had a true, hey, somebody's pushing somebody instead of just having five guys and trying to figure out, you know. So I, I think it's the competition has really made a difference over the summer. Uh, had a really good summer, and going into camp, it's made a difference. So, guys, you know, it means something to be one of the starting five, and they're, you know, it means something to be an old lineman here. And that's that's the way we're playing right now. We just I got to continue to push that. In terms of game readiness, how does Wyatt compare this year to Zach from last year? Uh, you know, it's that's. I feel like they're very similar personality-wise. Like they do, they don't get rattled about much. They're very competitive. They understand the game, so they're very similar. Um, you know, I say that I don't know. I don't know. You know, when they, you put sixty thousand people out there, and straight, I, mean, I didn't know what Zach was going to do either. You know, he went out his first game, and y'all saw him play. You know, he played really well. And I feel like I feel like Wide will do the same thing, uh, but just you know, they just have that demeanor about them where they're in control and they don't get real emotional about anything. And uh, so I feel like he'll do the same, but you know, we'll see. How many? Problem? Do you have right now, and how many do you want to have by the end of the camp? At least the guys you can depend on. I want twenty. <laughs> I want twenty that can play. Now, uh, you know, I, I feel really good about uh, seven guys right now. I feel like I got seven guys, but I feel like um, you know, with with uh, Hubbard really coming on at left tackle. You know, he's totally changed his body. He hadn't played in a year and a half. You know what I mean? So he's making some mistakes, but he's working really hard to. To, to you know, he's a really high effort, high energy guy. I really need him to come along. Uh, Malone is playing better and better. He's just solid. I moved him to guard instead of tackle. Uh, he's been really solid at that left guard spot. Um, you know, Jordan White is one of the seven guys I feel like can play. Um, so, so really, um, I, I feel good about seven guys, and I think we can get three more ready and feel pretty good about. Uh, Know, having that too deep that we've that elusive too deep that I've been chasing for the past two years, you know. When you see the problems you mentioned, more physical technique or more mental communication? You say the problems. When you see are, are when I see the problems, physical or more mental? Uh, it, it's more mental. It's more mental and and technique. Uh, you know, when when we do get beat on something, I mean, and the good thing is, you don't want to go through camp and win everything. It means you're not very good on defense, right? And we're going to get some really good players, and they take advantage of poor technique. And, you know, that's the great thing about, you know, going against uh, Mesador every day. You know, you if your hands are wrong, he's going to make you pay. If you're leaning, he's going to make you pay. And that's that's how good teams become great teams is they go against really good people, and you can't you can't be unfocused. You can't be, uh, you know, not giving full effort. you got to do those things, and that's what, that's what helps teams take that step from being a good team or an average team to being a good team or a great team. I mentioned Jordan White. You kind of view him as a two-for-one player because he can play those inside positions and also center a little bit. Yeah, I, I see him as a three-fold guy. I mean, center's coming along where he's getting better. He's getting way better. But he can play left guard, right guard, or center. Doug can play left guard or right guard. Gamitter can play left guard or center. So I've really tried to make that inside group where we got several guys that can, that can switch around and play some other positions. That seven maybe could be eight or nine if you count the. That's that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. You know the tackle position is where I really need to find out 
who the fourth guy is going to be. I got three of them. I got to find out who the fourth guy is going to be in, in case something happens. Who can go in there and not just get us through a game, but who can go in there and perform? You know, when when the game's on the line, if somebody gets hurt, who can go in there and perform? So that's that's what I'm working on now. I got to figure out who that's going to be. Yeah, who's your second left tackle right now? Is that the yeah, it's, it's, it's Jaquay Hubbard? Okay. Yeah, Jaquay Hubbard is, and he's like I said, he hadn't played in a year and a half. Changed his body. He's doing some really good things, making some, some mistakes that basically a redshirt freshman would normally make. But, you know, that kid, he plays with a kind of effort that just, you know, as a coach, you you want to do everything you can to make him. He plays with, with I mean, some unbelievable effort. Not just plays practices with unbelievable effort. As a, as, as a coach, how trying was it on you to get from where you were when you came in to where you are now? And well, I don't know if you remember when I got here, I was like 250. You know, I was all shredded up, and my hair was just completely dark. You know, no, it's but you understand it. Yeah, I understand. I understood. I mean, I've done it before. We did the same thing at Troy. You know, we knew it was a problem, and it really helps to have a head coach and an offensive coordinator that understands where you are. You know, and, and doesn't want you to go from here to here. He understands it's going to be here to here to here, and it's going to be a process, especially up front. You're not just going to flip the switch overnight. And, and, you know, we did, you know, to win the games we did and have success we did, a lot of it we called around the deficiencies we had up front. And, you know, now we're getting to the point where now hopefully we can call a game and we don't have deficiencies. We, we expect everybody to win and, uh, you know, to be able to run the offense. So it's it's been a process and it's been recruiting. It's been, uh, you know, fundamentals. It's been Mike Joseph. It's been all those things helping everybody. And it's been, like I said, competition is – a humongous part of it when you throw it in there, and you got to really compete every day. You got to compete in the weight room. You got to compete with taking care of your body. You got to compete with, uh, you know, fighting through injuries. All those things where if you don't have somebody right behind you, and you feel like, hey, I can, I can t take it easy today, and because you guys been, y'all know, you know, I had some guys where it didn't matter how hard they worked or not, they were probably going to start. But now, I feel like we're, we're beyond that point. Is it fair to say, um, I asked Neil this, um, if you take McKibbitz out of the mix that first year, would that second group talent-wise be comparable to the first offensive line you had the first year here? Taking McKibbitz out of the mix. Uh, yeah, probably. Especially being as early as we were in the scheme and as early as we were. In, so, yeah, probably very similar to what we're yeah, with the second group right now, you know. Have depth wise, if you didn't have four. Exactly, exactly. And how hard these kids have worked to, to get themselves better, you know. Doug Johnson, where is he, his progress from spring to where he is now? Uh, he's moving much faster. He's totally changed his body. You know, he came in here weighing close to 340. Uh, now he's got his body fat percentage down, you know, in the low 20s, high, high 19s, and he's down to 320 pounds consistently. So he's moving way better. Um, and he's just got to keep learning the intricacies of the game. He's a smart guy, and he wants to learn. And he is – you can see him – he's faster off the ball than he was in the spring. And a lot of that has to do with understanding what we're doing and understanding not having to think about every little thing. You know what I mean? So he's, his ball get offs way better. His um, – you know, we got to continue to work on his pad level, on his hand placement, you know, little things like that. But I think that uh, he has got a really, really high ceiling also. Really high sense. So I think we can, we got to continue to progress through the you know through the season. That's the big thing too. It's not just game one. Here we are. We should be game four. We're we're better. Game eight. We're better. Game ten. We're better. As an old line, especially as young as we are, we shouldn't just get to a plateau and say here's where we are after Maryland. We got to keep climbing and keep continuing to get better and better. Coach, ultimately, what do you hope the identity of your group is this season? Physical. Effort. I want somebody to turn the film on and go, my God, these dudes play hard. These guys play hard. They get after it. We're blue collar. We don't care about getting any kind of accolades. We're just playing hard. We're playing smart. But the biggest thing is I just want us to be physical. What we have not been to the point where we want it to be. I want us to be the most physical offensive line in the country. That's what I want somebody. I want the defensive coordinator next week to turn that film on and go, God, boy, well, those jokers play hard. They get after it. They play hard, and they're fundamentally sound. Do you keep mixing guys until you break camp and then determine who your group is you're going to work with in Maryland? Do you keep tweaking guys, moving around a little bit? Uh, or are you starting to narrow that down a little bit? No, I've been moving uh, 
Well, trying to develop a second team center has been one of those things where it's been Gamitter's been the starting center for the second group one day, and then Jay White plays right guard with the first group. Doug plays left. And then the next day they switch. Jay White goes to left guard, Doug to right, and then Jay White goes back to um, play center with the first group. So that's been like a little three-way deal. And it's, and it's really just trying to make sure we've got an answer for – Hey, something happens. We need a we need a center that can we can function and we can move the ball. And we can, you know, so really. And then having Doug play both guards, so he's ready to go on either side. Your comfort level was back at the center. I mean, so he, he, I don't think he started a game there last year, but also now he seems like eh, okay. That's the one guy we can depend on. Yeah, you know, the thing is with Zach is is you know his his dad and his mom have done a phenomenal job with keeping the kid so humble, but at the same time pushing him. And pushing him, and, and his dad spent a lot of time with him with football growing up, understanding the game and understanding the big picture. He does such a good job and studies so hard at understanding where the play's going to start and who we're who we're going to ID and who's working to who, and the communication of that is just I'm, I'm very comfortable. I think we can continue to get better and continue to get better and see the secondary now and understand safety rotation, and that's when you start getting to that those 400 level classes. You know what I mean? One more individual, Parker Moore is a guy that we don't talk a whole lot about, but where is he? You mentioned him a little bit. Uh, you know, he's in a dog fight right now with White Milan. They're in a dog fight. They're splitting reps. Um, basically, they split the scrimmage. Uh, you know, it, up, up until the scrimmage, White had been getting all the second team reps, uh, and, and uh, Parker had been getting the first team reps. And then, you know, it's hard to make a decision when, you know, you got the first team guy going against first team defense all the time. A say team guy, you're like, oh man, he's looking really good. Well, then you realize, then you say, well, we need to flip that thing. So we flipped it. Now Wyatt got all the first team reps against the first team defense. So trying to make that decision, but they they're in a dog fight. He's gotten way better. Parker's gotten way better, and he's continuing to work. He's had a great off season, but uh, you know he's there. It's going to be a it's going to be a dog fight to figure out who's going to start at that right tackle spot. Will you play multiples in a rotation? Last year, you really only I guess rotated one guy consistently yeah. unless he had to do something. I, I will seven if, or eight this I, year? I, I, I won't do it just to do it. I'll do it if I got somebody that like – like Jordan White, he's good enough where he can go in there. But I'm not just going to roll a guy in just to roll a guy in. I'm going to make – you know, if we're if we're somewhere where I feel like I got seven that I don't even bat an eye at, I can put them in, we'll do that. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to um, – we're going to make sure the best five right there as much as they can be, you know. You think a guy, the way you guys play with tempo and different things, you think a guy like Doug can play 50 snaps right off the bat, or is that? Yeah, no doubt. Doubt. no okay. doubt. Mike Joseph's done a phenomenal job with Doug. They've done a phenomenal job. The O line had a, you know, from talking to Mike, had a really good offseason conditioning, everything, running the hill, didn't miss a rep. I got no issues with Doug playing 80 snaps. You talk about wanting a physical image. How do you develop that? Well, it starts from Coach Joseph. It starts with Mike Joseph. It starts with the weight room. It starts with the mentality of pushing yourself and being mentally tough and then getting on the field and just, you know, demanding that out of them, you know, and just reminding them over and over. What we got to do today, we got to be physical. We got to be physical. It's a, it's a decision, you know. It's like, you know, it's like anything else you do. It's a habit you develop where every time we put the ball down, if you tell them it's full go, they got to be physical. There's no, you know, in some of the guys, it's a struggle. You got to constantly remind them. You got to constantly be on them about – being more physical all the time. Brandon Yates has come a million miles in a year and a half, you know, two years of trying to be a more physical player every snap. How much, if any, does a Lachlan's absence affect, you know, developing comfort, blocking with the tackles, the things you all want to do, especially on exterior runs? I right, said that again about does How much does uh, a Lachlan's absence do? Oh, well, for the yeah. Does that affect him working with the tackles, them getting comfortable for your exterior run blocking? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely one of those things where the communication between tackle and tight end has to be on point. And Banks has done a really good job, you know, but it's going to take, you know, when Ole Offlin comes back and gets in there, it's going to, you know, we're going to have to really work to get those reps that we lost to make sure we understand the looks, who the mic ID is, who's the plus one, minus one, who we're working to. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's, and it happens like this. You know, it's easy to freeze the film and say it, you know, but when you're out there and your hands on the ground and you're talking about it, those, those reps are going to be something we're going to have to figure out a way to steal them back. What's this group do best? Pass pro, inside run? Uh, what, what do you, what do you, what's the area that you got to clean up a little bit, you think? 
you know, it goes day to day. I, I, you know, you know, we're really working hard on outside zone. We're really working hard on inside zone. We, you know, we're trying to be, you know, nothing really first except physical. Whether no matter what we're doing, but I feel like, you know, I just think that that we're, we're definitely getting better at covering people up and running the ball, and uh, you know, pass pro is just. It's one of those things where you just got to continue to work it, you know, especially versus our defense with all the twists and stuff you get, you know, don't get as much straight rush. So you're always, you know, thinking about that. How do you get better at that? How do you get, how do you log full speed reps of that? So I can't really put my finger on saying, hey, this is what we're great at and this is what we're bad at, you know. The scrimmage Saturday, there were some, there were some issues with the defense. Was it with the younger guys just identifying? Were they doing some different things that they, that they were getting pressure on you guys a little bit? In the scrimmage on Saturday, uh, I recall being with the second team a lot. You remember? I'm trying to remember. Um, no, I tell you, you know, we, we had some we had some situations where we got bowled back into the quarterback, where you know it's just young players, you know that that you know it's like Jaquay a couple, a couple times gave up some pressure at left tackle, and it's just him continuing to develop as a player. You know, he's standing straight up, you get bowled back in the quarterback, just. Fundamental stuff like that we got to fix. So there weren't confusing things that they were doing. No, like no. Okay. You know, by this time, you've seen them enough. It was just poor technique, lost leverage. No, no questions about the receivers. Or the, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to answer those anymore. Right? Appreciate it, guys.